America, a land whose multicultural melting pot is seasoned with pepper. Americans, the world's most extravagant eaters of the spice, long ago forswore their monarchy. Yet at lunchtime in New York, pastrami is king. And here in its palace is Crown Prince Leo Steiner. Well, first let me wish you a good morning because I always have good morning so you'll be cheerful and full of pep and vigor to eat the best corned beef and pastrami in the world. And we are the best. You know why we're the best? I'll tell you why. Because we are experts in our field. There is no better delicatessen in the world. See, years ago, they used to take and used to make their own corned beef and their own pastrami. But today, most of the people buy it from provision makers, from meat dealers, from everybody like that. We are the only delicatessen left that makes everything ourselves, everything. And this is why we're so good. We take our time, we age our meat, we buy the finest corn-fed steers. You see, you must know meat. You must know this type of a food. The tuna. Pastrami. Pastrami is beef pickled in pepper and smoked. Meat preserved with salt and spices was once essential. Today, it's just... Can you believe that? Now, this piece of meat I have here is about 14 days old. See, now, as you can tell, the aging process has started and so forth. Now we're ready to pickle it. Now, this is our spices. This is our spices after we have ground it down. As you can tell, you see how dry it is? And how it is, we've ground the spice down. Now, after we grind it down, we take and we dip the meat in one side and we dip it in the other side. Now, after dipping it in both sides, in the spices, we rub the spices into it. Having the cavity here with the fat in it, we also rub that in. See, as we rub everything into it, how it turns the coloring of the meat, as you can see. See, right back here, too. We rub this here in. This is a process that takes hours because our tonnage of meat calls for a lot of it. We rub it in. It's got to be rubbed in by hand. After we rub it in good like this here, we leave it stand on our working table over here. See as we rubbed it in? See, and then this flavor goes through it. Double deli, super pastrami. You put Jack Robin. You Enjoy, and more than that, I can't tell you, folks. Just enjoy good food. Come on, Jeremy, breakfast ready. Good morning, good morning. Good day, Saxon. The Suffolk countryside. Sunny mornings in an English garden. Mm. Ah, and remember that smell. Farm fresh eggs, country bacon and real pork sausages. And here's the man mainly responsible. Alan Cooper, the village butcher. People from 50 miles away are drawn by the sign of the bull. Mr. Cooper's sausages are not so much traditional as timeless. 2,000 years ago, the Roman armies marched right past this shop. Well, nearby, anyhow. They brought sausages with them. The armies are gone, but the sausages stayed. At the very moment yesterday's are being devoured, today's must be brought into the world. These black peppercorns are ground almost to a fine powder to distribute the flavour evenly and to prevent any coarse bits from exploding in the mouth. Fresh pork is bland. Pepper not only adds flavour, but draws out the fresh Suffolk herbs also added. itself is not a preservative. 
but it has been employed since ancient times to make preserved meats palatable. Modern refrigeration may have rendered sausages, and for that matter, pastrami, unnecessary, but the demand and desire for them has never wavered. In smokehouses from New York to Old Suffolk, nothing could be more unlikely than a pepperless piece of meat. Hello. Hello. Morning. My goodness, it must be late. Here we go. I'll say to you, please. Can you pass pepper, please? Oh, black or white? Black, please. If you would eat well in England, said Somerset Maugham, you must eat breakfast three times a day. Today, pepper is but a reach away, and these Suffolk children, like us all, sprinkle it with impunity and little regard for cost. At breakfast in Suffolk, it is hard to believe that for the simple pleasures of pepper, men once crowded into tiny wind-blown craft and sailed across vast seas. The French sailed up the St. Lawrence River, searching for the elusive Northwest Passage to India and Pepper. Instead, they found Quebec and stayed. The city's founder looks out with his consorts into the room which bears his name. Restaurant Le Champlain, in Canada's famous fairyland hotel, Le Chateau Frontenac. If you've ever wondered what the chefs at a great restaurant eat for their lunch, watch and see. Only this lunch is at half past ten in the morning. The cooking style here is international haute cuisine even though the chef's own meals are simple and satisfying. <laughs> Oat cuisine relies heavily on herbs and is not particularly spicy, but pepper is indispensable. Nothing else gives food a slight piquancy and extra body without upsetting the balance of flavors. Now, for example, take this consomme. Pepper doesn't dissolve in boiling water, but it does leave a lingering aroma. According to the chef, a certain je ne sais quoi. Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir. Le Paris Merci. Monsieur. Merci, Monsieur. Merci, Monsieur. Est-ce que vous aimeriez un bon, comme vous suggère, un bon soufflet de homard, avec, fait avec du pomard au poivre blanc, euh, quelque chose de vraiment extraordinaire? Les Québécois boastent que leurs Gaspé lobsters from down the St. Lawrence are sweeter than the more famous Maine variety. But for either, a hint of white pepper defines the choice flavor of the meat. And cognac, that most Gallic of spirits. It must be flambéed to drive off the alcohol and leave just the right taste. Next, a sauce made from the lobster shells and thick cream. The lesson here is that some of the best flavor resides in the shells. Sit. 
Excellent. Très bien. Marc, est-ce que tu veux envoyer le blanc d'œuf, s'il vous plaît? Merci. Once ready, the egg whites must be used immediately. They've been beaten with a wire whisk until they stand in peaks. But if they are kept waiting, they'll just collapse. The whites are somewhat temperamental. Even a speck of grease in your mixing bowl, and they won't rise at all. The blandness, or let us say the delicacy, of the white is helped by a dash of white pepper. Black pepper would spoil the look. White pepper is the same spice as black, just the aromatic outer skin is removed. It's used most where the chef really cares about the appearance and the subtlety of the dish. It was customary in France to say that the souffle waits for no one, not even a king. Anyhow, who would want to wait for this souffle d'Omar Chateau Frontenac? In 1830, the great French chef Carême wrote about the souffle. He considered it a good way to use leftovers. Well, you, uh, you could whip one of these up yourself. You probably have some eggs and, for sure, the pepper. That all you really need is a bit of leftover Gaspé lobster. Et voilà, monsieur. Merci. Bon appétit. Merci Mm, C'est bon. C'est bon. Mm, this is France proper, Paris near the new art center. If the new world so excels in the cooking of the old, it should be of no little surprise that the old world invented a style of cooking called the new or nouvelle. La ciboulette. It means chives. As it is a mecca of nouvelle cuisine, naturally it boasts a nouvelle chef. I don't cook, but I love taste and I love imagine what will become a dish. So I think the best work to describe me is to say that I am a designer. Because I think in a restaurant, the most important is that people must be happy, I think. Master chef, or chef designer Jean-Pierre Coff, invents here a dish especially for us, using four kinds of pepper. Not only black and white, but green. And something that looks like pepper and isn't, which is pink. It's all mixed together with this salt. And then, well, wait and see. Pepper for me, it's like a perfume. When you wash yourself and when you finish your toilet, uh, you put some perfume. And you don't put the same perfume if you are going to play golf in the morning and if you are going to the theater at night. So the pepper uh, must only help your personality, you see, like the perfume. And pepper for me, it's uh, just to help the real taste of the product we use.
Ah, there it is. Chicken cooked in a crust of salt and pepper. Actually, this is a very ancient Nouvelle recipe going back to antiquity. And the secret is you mix the salt in egg whites before applying it to the chicken. Ah, yes, those pink peppercorns, they come in little bottles from the gourmet shop, but are really the fruit of a South American shrub. Today, the traders of Singapore handle more telexes than pepper sacks, but still a quarter of the world's crop passes through. Java, Sumatra, Sarawak, and India. Three quarters of the population is Chinese, and there are large Indian and Malay communities. This means a wide choice of food. Every region of China is represented, along with the local Nonya specialities. Here, the cooking of different regions and countries sort of go cheek by jowl. circus is the place to sample everything. It's fast food heaven, or perhaps nirvana. Violet Un, a local cookery columnist, is showing some visitors around. Yeah, yeah lovely aroma. Ah, laksa, that's my dish, you know. You, you, that's a specialty, Nyonya specialty. You cook it a lot. In Newton's circus, the idea is to go from hawker to hawker, ordering different dishes. Tell them where you're sitting, and the food is brought to your table. The satay seller offers barbecued meat according to your religion, pork, beef, or chicken. Order this is a classical local dish which is sort of found in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The secret of satay is that it's soaked in a marinade for several hours before cooking. Naturally, a marinade with pepper. And so overpowering are the sensual delights. The visitors stick close to their leader. What is this? Eh? Soup tambeng. You oh. like it? You know? Yes, yeah. I think it's very nice. Yeah, it's Southern Indian Muslim food. Eh? Mm. Mutton is the basis of soup kambing. <laughs> that giant pot is loaded with mutton bones which helped make broth rich. You'll never guess what was the very first seasoning put in. And almost the last. Crab Cantonese style is slightly compromised here in Singapore. Pepper is the seasoning, but it is something the Chinese in China rarely use. A local spice is their alternative. Ah, 
well, the crabs are here. Beautiful. Yes, lovely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, now we have everything. Uh. Yeah. This is, you know, Cantonese, uh. this is crab, crab with pepper. And then we have laksa, which is a nyonya, a strange Chinese dish. And soup kambing is Indian Muslim. And satay, which is a local dish, you know, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. And this is a Teochew fish porridge from China also. And all of them, I suppose, they do have pepper in them. They use it. Uh. So shall we start eating and see how we like it? Yeah. yeah. Suli, would you like some crab? Yes. Let me get for you, okay? Suli, do you like the crab? Yes. Is it good? Mm, the way you're using it. Wow, you're enjoying it. I think they add more pepper with pepper. Italy, near Bologna, the end of the harvest at the Cortelli farm and a celebration lunch. Senior Gortelli slices his own homemade copper. It's cured neck of pork. In his words, pepper has two functions, to preserve and to give aroma. The aroma is the more important. <laughs> Chicken fried in flour and oil must be a favorite in a hundred countries and called a thousand names. Here it's chicken alla guatelli. It's first coated with a mixture of flour, salt and pepper. It's then fried in a pan with parsley, garlic, onion, carrots and lard. Remember Leo Steiner from New York? He summed it all up. Good food, enjoy. <laughs>